What is going on everyone? My name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to show you my favorite technique of side chaining in FL Studio without using any third party plugins. <laughs> So our journey starts with just white noise. And we want to sidechain this noise to let's say this kick. Right now it's not sidechained, it sounds very dry. What we're going to do is route the noise, which is just noise from Serum into an insert, any insert, just anywhere here. And then what we're going to do here after we've added whatever effects you want is to route it into a sidechain bus. And now what I like to do is I like to take, uh, let's see, one of these last ones and go dock to right. So I have this little area here and this will always be here no matter where I am in the mixer. So I'm just going to label this side chain. And what we're going to do here is when we have the noise channel selected, we go down to this little arrow, right click and go route to this track only. This will unroute the noise from the master and it will route it only into the side chain channel. And the side chain channel then is routed into the master. Now you can see, the noise is coming through the sidechain. Now the only thing we're gonna do in this sidechain channel is add a little plugin called Fruity Balance. Now you should have this plugin in literally any version of FL Studio. It's one of the basic plugins, most basic plugins ever. We got the volume and I got a pan, that's it. So all we're gonna do is create an automation clip here. Now we have this little uh, volume. Step one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this value right here, which I believe is 80%, and then I'm going to paste it onto the max right here. And what this does is now it's saying that 80% value is 100% in this automation clip. So now if I pull it up to here, that is actually going to be 80% value, not 100% because we don't want it to go over right here. We don't want it to get any louder than that. So max on the automation clip is now this level right here. So now we're gonna do the basics. We are going to create a automation curve to resemble a side chain. So right now I can just make any point. And a basic side chain is going to look kind of like this. But that is a little strong. Let me put two down so I can edit them both at the same time. It's a little strong, so let's create a little bit of a smoother curve. There we go, that's just a really tight side chaining. And you can draw whatever kind of curve you want here with unlimited amount of points. Now that's a really small and tight side chaining for a really small and tight kick. However, if you want to do something a little bigger like this uh, dubstep kick. Now this is a much bigger and longer kick as you can see from the sample. So all we'd have to do is just create a bigger and longer side chain. I tend not to go any longer than uh, these two beats right here. Even then that's still a little bit long. So I think I'm going to do something like this. Now I have a satisfactory shape for my side chain, but that is not all we're doing here. It would be very inconvenient to put down, you know, one of these side chain automation clips every time a kick or a snare comes up in your song. So I have come up with a technique to, you know, avoid having to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new pattern. I'll call this kick. And I would do this same exact thing if I was doing it for the snare. I just make another pattern that says snare. What I would do is let me go, let me just go into all. And what I'll do here is I'll take my kick and I'll lay that down. That'll be in our kick pattern. And I'm also gonna put a point on the side chain, which is uh, the balance side chain volume here. And now that we've created our shape, we can just delete it. And every time we lay down a kick pattern, it is going to have both our kick and that side chain shape playing at the same time. But now we can hear that every time this kick is triggered, the side chain shape that we made is also getting triggered. If I turn it off, you can clearly hear the difference. There's a big difference there. And again, I do the exact same thing once I made the snare. And the good thing about this is now if we ever want to edit the side chain, all we have to do is drop in our little side chain here and mess with the shape, do whatever we want to the shape, and that will affect every single side chain hit throughout the entire song. Another good thing about it is if I wanted to create another side chain for the snare, all I have to do is go make unique, and then I'll do something maybe you want like a little longer for the snare. Maybe you want to do something weird like that. Then all you have to do is when you make your snare pattern, this is the kick pattern. If I wanted to make a snare pattern, all I'd have to do is take this second automation clip and go like that and just not put this one. 
and then you'd have a good snare automation. I do want to say this is not technically side chaining. This is technically called ducking. However, the majority of the side chaining done nowadays in EDM music is actually ducking. Very few people use a compressor. They tend to use plugins that use volume automation or some form of what I'm doing here. Now, this is a little bit more of a complex process than most people are used to doing. There are probably most people are used to using LFO tool or you know something like that to do automation that way. And that's a lot easier. However, once you do this, you A, have more control, I believe, and B, you also can save it as a template. I have my startup template that I use every time with this side chain already built in and it works really well. This is my template right here. I have the kick pattern, I have the snare pattern, and I have the side chain. You can see when I pull up the kick, I have an empty kick channel with nothing in it for whatever kick I'm using and I have the sidechain already triggered as well as the sub and stuff. But I also have the snare channel with an empty snare uh, sampler here and also with the sidechain triggered on that as well. This, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to sidechain in FL Studio without using third-party plugins. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, drop a like below as well as subscribe for future tutorials. Now, there are a lot of different techniques to sidechain and we love to know which one is your favorite. Let us know in the comments below and share some knowledge. Once again, thank you guys for your support and I will see you in the next video. Happy reusing. <laughs>